Before you joined the call, Katie and I were comparing bald spots. <laughs> oh my God, no. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, There's so like, I you have, have some yeah. there. Well, that, I think it's just a cowlick. Mm. So like oh. everything's going different directions. It's like. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. that's my hope at least. Oh, fuck. I'm hoping for that too. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like I have a lot of volume up. Like everything mm. is great up. But then here, like, you know, when I do a bit this, like mm. there is some, no, you know. It looks fabulous. It looks fabulous. Yeah, you will always have beautiful great. hair. Thank and you And so also, <laughs> if you had, if you ever cut it off, it will still be beautiful. Your oh. hair is, it will not be, your brand will not change. It, change. it will be beautiful no matter what. I, on the other hand, have baby hairs from postpartum but i had a kid three years ago so wh oh. why are these still an inch long for women just their hair changes after like, i don't know i had these little like money pieces but they would like stick straight up like this <laughs> for like the first full year and i looked like the grinch <laughs> or satan or something i don't know satan. <laughs> they like literally like alfalfa style they were like hey you just had a baby Anyway, it's all good. It's just well, hair. Hair grows. You, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, hair grows or not, you know? <laughs> yeah, just, or not. Hair, or you just shave grows. it. Hair grows. Well, fine. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, do you know this band Incubus? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so like Hair Goals is like Brandon because I think he's mm -hmm. almost 50 years old mm -hmm. and he still has good hair. I'm always looking, looking up to him. I haven't and, you checked know, I'm in like, lately. Yeah, well, he has like longer hair than me right now. So it looks pretty good. Gray and stuff. And I was like, oh, mm -hmm. maybe that. But then I was looking at photos when he was my age that he had it shorter. And I'm mm -hmm. like, hmm, maybe I could do that at some point. But then I'm so afraid. Like I had long hair since I was 13 and I'm 33. Oh, so. wow. Mm. It's amazing. I've cut my hair every length. One time I dyed my money pieces with Kool-Aid. And, <laughs> and then I... This was when, like, this was when keeping the money pieces out, like, in front of your face so that no one could see you was popular. And I would yes. just go like this and put it in my mouth, and it would taste like Kool Aid. And it that shit would not come out of my hair for like <laughs> months. It was That's delicious. Impressive. Well, it's also Beautiful. worrying. It's really worrying. What's it doing to our insides if it can fully dye your hair for a while? I don't know. I no. mean, I don't drink Kool Aid anymore. Nobody you don't knows. Drink the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, the the Kool-Aid, but That's not what this Kool is. Anyway, the I feel like everyone can probably guess who we're talking to just by talking about someone who has really great hair with a beautiful accent. <laughs> can you just quickly introduce yourself for anyone who's like, I can't, I'm not, I'm listening. I don't know who this is. Who are you? Yeah. What are you doing uh, who, here? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> I'm in my flat. Everything's good. It's hot. That's why I just came out of a shower. I'm in mm -hmm. Barcelona and my name is Jimbo. But actually, that's not my real name, but we can get into that another time. Mm, tell us. I mean, I mean, Jimbo, come on. I'm Spanish. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. I didn't know it wasn't your real name. You fooled me. Nah. No, 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 no. My name is Jaume. So Ooh. can you pronounce that? Can you pronounce that? Jaume. Jaume. So it's Catalan. We did. I think, I think you said it great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was really looking for confirmation there and we didn't get it. <laughs> no. <I'll... laughs> I guess I would have criticized you if it sounded really bad, but it was good. Yeah. So props. I um, mean, people screw up Katie's name all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Nope, just kidding. But people do get true. mine. People think that mine is two L's, so they think it's it, Lana yeah, or Yana. It always looks like Llama. Llama, that's, yeah. That's where I get my nickname from. But my neighbor keeps calling, keeps, whenever she texts me, it says double L. And I'm like, mm. I feel yeah, like we know I'll, each other better. Like half of our email inbox is like, yes, Lana. It's fine. I, Lana. I do think I'll survive. How do you pronounce double L in the US? Oh. <laughs> because I feel like, yeah, I feel like it just is pronounced like one L. Because but here, here we have, a, be, we yeah. have a pronunciation. Yeah, but it's in Catalonia, it's L. Yeah, so it's. Right. Yeah. L yeah, yeah, it would be like Yana. Or Yana. That's, that's yeah. how I would think. There you go. It, any, anyway, anyway, my name is. How did you? Is how did you get Kimbo. your nickname? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is gonna be the most interesting part because I always introduce myself in a different way. I feel like I don't even know who I am anymore. So, okay, <laughs> it says in my bio in my website that my name is Jimbo Bernaus and I'm a lettering artist. I'm a graphic designer. I'm an art director. I'm a bit of everything. I love colors. I love nature. I love rock and roll. As you can see up here. Incubus. I love Incubus. And I have a little design studio called Shell Bam. And we a do... little. It's pretty cool. Well, yeah, it's little because we're just two. And now, right now, Taya is doing more of the ceramics and all that. So, like, I'm a bit lonely sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I get it. We get yeah. it. We get so... it. Okay, I have a question before you keep yeah. going. Yeah, tell me. How did you get your nickname, first of all? Oh, okay, we're getting there. I think that's it's yeah. the first time that I say it online. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. 
Oh, nice. <laughs> super, super <laughs> interesting. It's, it's like... Okay, so my name is Jaume, right? And my father, I started having bands, like, I think like 15 years ago or something like that. Wow. And he was wow. like, yo, Jaume, it's just not, you know. <laughs> uh, maybe for you, it sounds exotic, but here in Catalonia, it's like, yeah, every second person is called the same. Oh. So my dad was like, okay, let's think about it. So he was brainstorming while at work. And he was like, okay, so Jaume in English would be James. And then the short oh. for that would be Jim. Okay, so like he got the Jim. And then my surnames, because I have two surnames because I'm Spanish. So my surnames are Bernaus and then Otero, which is like B and O. So mm -hmm. Jim, B, O, Jimbo, and okay. ta-da, it happened. <laughs> it's Magic. It's all coming together. <laughs> Magic. So yeah, that's a little bit about myself. It's funny because um, the yeah. only Jimbos that I've ever heard of other than you are like live in the down south and talk like this. <laughs> yeah. I'm Jimbo. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah. And you're and, very much not that. So I really yeah. love the contrast there. It's <laughs> like Jimbo with surprise. a little spice. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Spicy um, Jimbo. Something that you spicy mentioned. Spicy Jimbo. Was, <laughs> Go ahead. Something Ella. that you mentioned was that you like kind of do a lot of different things. You're a musician, yes. you're graphic design, art direction, creative direction, lettering. And something that Kelly Anderson said to us recently was that she picked graphic design because it's such a like large bucket. I feel like when you pick graphic design yeah. as your field, you can choose to focus more on the creative direction. You can choose to focus on illustration. Yeah. And I don't feel like that's ever like, nobody knows that until you're like 10 years into it and you're like, oh, I can yeah. do any of these things. But I feel like it's such a great segue into so many different things like type design or lettering or illustration. And I definitely did not know that. I was like, well, I can't be an illustrator because I didn't go to school for illustration. I went for graphic design, but actually just the principles alone. Yeah, I, I actually can. And also you don't need to go to school for any of it. I mean, you can, it's school's great, but also but you don't have to. You don't have to, no. I feel like I can defend both because mm -hmm. I went to school, but like before my university, I went to this technician degree, which is like two years here in Spain. Yeah. And it teaches you a little bit of InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, how to mm -hmm. logo types. Like, and with that, I could basically work as a graphic designer. I didn't need oh. more. But then I wanted to get, you know, a bit more into it. So like I went to university and then they taught me lettering and typography and composition and colors and all that. But yeah, yeah totally. I feel like you can, sometimes I just, like normally I'm always motivated. Like I'm a very happy person, I would say. So like I'm always wanna, you know, every time, that's what I say the whole time. Like whenever I get up in the morning, I'm super happy because I know I'm gonna create something new today, which is like, something that I would never change for anything in the world. But at the same time, sometimes if it's a bit gray outside or if my hormones are just not balanced, you know, when I'm sad, I just maybe I can write a newsletter or just start, I don't know, getting better at Pinterest or like things that really don't require creativity, which is good, you know, yeah. because then it keeps things balanced. So do you yeah. feel like the days where you're not focusing on creating art, are you focusing on growing your business or like, how do you fit the business side into it? Because I feel like you are always exploring and experimenting, which I feel like a lot of artists that are kind of, once they get to a certain level, like they become an expert, they stop trying new things and they get really comfortable. But I don't feel like yeah. you've ever done that. I feel like you're always trying something new. So then how do you make time to like work in your business? That's a good question because I feel like I wouldn't be able to do the same thing always. I just have to keep moving, you know? And I think what helps me a lot is doing digital products because I have to explore all these textures and effects and all that. And I believe like now that I'm doing digital products, I think I, we started like four years ago. And I think like every set, it's like I wanna find something new so I can teach to people. And I just don't wanna be like, I don't know, I'm gonna do like 3D lettering and that's it. But like, I'm gonna explore yeah. like, how to do it in watercolor, how to be more realistic, how to do it more like more full of textures, rough. So I feel like I have time to explore because every time that I explore and I come up with a new style, I can teach people the you fastest. Can monetize it. Yeah. And I feel like I can teach people the fastest route. So like, I feel like I take the long one because I have no idea. Right. So like, I'm trying to find this and that and courses and inspiration and this and that. And then after like a month or two, when I feel comfortable, like I can teach it to people, but I can teach them in the fast way so they can go faster than me because it took me, you know, God knows how much, but Wow. Yeah, that's how I get to explore the styles, I think, because I want to teach it to people. So, yeah. It's so interesting because a lot of the people we talk to struggle with having finding their style, mm. but you've been able to have a consistent style while trying all of those things. So while doing 3D, while doing watercolor, while doing dimensional lettering, while doing flat illustration, while doing floral, like botanicals, I feel like 
your style just shows through. And people often get stuck at that spot where they're like, well, I want to try something new, but I'm not going to be good at it. And then it's not going to look like me. But somehow, please let us know the magic secret. You've been able to like have your little Jimbo spice on top of all of it (laughs) while doing something outside your comfort zone. And you're like willing to be bad. I mean, it obviously never looks like you're bad at it, but you're saying I try something new and I spend all this time trying to figure it out until I'm good at it and then can teach it. And so do you think there's any like secret sauce to keeping your style at the top and like at the forefront while you're learning a new skill and like kind of pivoting your style? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. No, no, no. But I think I have it. The thing is that I feel like, yeah, definitely. I think art is like the question we get the most is how do you find your style, right? Like Mm -hmm. that's what you said. Like I keep getting this question all the time Mm -hmm. and I'm always telling them, do I have a style? Because I don't even know that I have a style. So I think that the thing like our style is just a compilation of life experiences. I don't know. I feel like yeah. you cannot just teach a style and be like, this is my style. No, because you're going to maybe put some plant that you saw yesterday when you were walking, when you were hiking or something, or something that a teacher told you once that got stuck in your mind and you don't even realize or what your mom told you three days ago. So I really feel like maybe when people see a style in what I do is because my style is not just let's say it's complicated, but like, it's not just like trying to, because I never try to have this. It just comes up because I feel like it's just this mix in between all these experiences that I had. So I keep believing that nobody should be obsessed on trying to find a style because I think the style comes to you after you practice and practice and practice. And I think to find your style, you just have to practice it. And then you're going to see what you like the most because I started doing calligraphy, for example, and I don't like calligraphy. I don't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For I, example. I, like, you know I get I mean? that. Hmm? So and I mean, when I do colorful stuff, I'm like, I feel joy. And then when I add this and I add that, and then I feel joy. And then I change the medium or whatever, but it, somehow it's still me. And I really, it's like, I didn't say much here, but. you No, <laughs> I think you did. The trap is that we're each so just completely consumed with our own way of thinking and being that we think it's the default way when really it's not at all. It's just the really weird, unique way we've come to perceive things and create. And in fact, when we start looking at it and comparing it to other things, we're like, oh, wait, this isn't how the other person approached this at all. Like, I guess I do have a unique perspective and way of looking at things so we're always pointing that out to people when they're like i don't have a style it's like "Uh uh-huh you do Mm, i can see it here and here and here and look how you're doing the same mark making here and look how you're thinking about this perspective and like i can even see through lines when i look back at my childhood drawings like i can Mm. see whoa just like the way that i would like think about a character or a space from like a certain way and draw it Like I still draw some illustration things like starting with the same principles I did as a kid. It's just interesting. So interesting. I feel like when I was a kid, I just thought that if you were going to be an artist, you had to be realistic. And so I felt, and I'm not a realistic, that's not my skill set. And so I was always like trying to make things more realistic. And oftentimes they ended up just looking worse instead of just like leading (laughs) and being like a little weird. And I can't tell you how many times I've said to Katie, like, do you see themes through my work? Like when I'm in a rut or like creatively burnt out and I can't identify my own voice, I'll go to Katie and be like, how would you describe my work? And she's able to quickly pull out through lines in my work. And I'm like, oh, right, you're right. And we do this a lot with our students where they come to us and it's so clear to us what their through lines are. And it doesn't have to be this like huge thing. Like, well, I only use pink. (laughs) It can be these like, that's a horrible example, but it doesn't have to be like, well, her style is X, Y, and Z. It can be, well, your style feels this way, or like there's a lot of line work in your style, or you're drawn to this specific color palette, and that helps unify your work. There's so many different ways it can look. And I think you've done such a great job of showing that you can have a style, but also experiment a lot and play a lot, which can be hard to do when you're like up there in your craft and it is, it. yeah, it is. Okay. And sometimes I'm even afraid because I'm like, maybe I should just stick to one. Because for example, the style that I have like a couple, three pieces that I know if I keep doing, I'll get more traction and I'll get more mm-hmm. because mm. I feel like people like it a bit more. But mm-hmm. I feel like it's sometimes I want to be a bit selfish. And instead of being like, I'm just going to give you what you want. I feel like feed the machine. I, because otherwise, like if I keep doing something that I mean, I do enjoy, but if I keep doing it all, over and over again, 
then I might get tired of it. And yeah. I'm so scared of getting tired of my craft. Mm. So that's why I need to experiment. And again, there's a lot of people that, for example, when it comes to calligraphy, there's a, people that just do one style of calligraphy their whole life and that's it. And they are fulfilled with this. And I love it. I wish I was like that, but apparently I'm not. So, so, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. You got to feed your soul machine, not the social media machine. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the priority out of the Even if machine. sometimes we sadly have to do it, but I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a tightrope we all have to walk as business owners and we're trying to market and we're trying to make a living, but also not at the expense of our souls. <laughs> Speaking of a tightrope, <clears throat> I just need to like go on a tangent for like a hot second. That's totally unrelated. Okay. There's this thing called the Fringe Fest. Have you either of you ever heard of it, Katie? Yes, I know I told you about me it a million times about the. Fringe it's so cool. I just went. Fest. <laughs> Wait, I just went to it. <laughs> yeah, the Fringe Fest. Yeah, it's like off the fringe. I think it's like circus acts and comedy shows and like things that are like one step removed. Why do you know it? I was there uh, two months ago. A month and no a half. way. In Scotland. Amazing. I think it travels the world, right? I mean, I'm assuming. Yeah, but it started in Scotland and I think now there's one in the US too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yeah. went to it and there was this guy walking the tightrope and he was wearing like a long skirt and he was like, I swear, he was like pretending that he was like going to fall because he was, this guy, I mean, he had it down packed. He at one point Did like moonwalked. <laughs> Did you say Did I? it down packed? I don't know. Did I? What is the, say what I you think, think so. is the correct. What, it, what should I have said? I'm asking you. I don't know. I think I, no. I don't know. <laughs> say, I had it down. What? Packed? <laughs> pat? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I think it's just pat, pat. Pat. Oh I thought gosh. it was like pat. That was a real like... Angela moment. <laughs> I chucked it. I'm, I chucked I'm, it. I'm the Spanish one. I can't help. Yeah, it. I don't know. But you thought um, that was wrong, right? No, I didn't. I didn't even. Feel oh it, well, no. you were laughing, so you're. Just <laughs> I was laughing. I was laughing because this thing you two got that's going on. <laughs> I don't know. No, I thought I, I was just, like packed in there. Like no, she had I don't know. Pat, like I really don't know why, but now okay, I'm well, double check. But I mean, that's really funny. Listen, okay, sorry, if someone's continue. gonna if someone's <laughs> gonna screw up an idiom, it's me. Anyway, he's just like walking the tightrope, and it's Pat. I, he was like going like this. He's going back and forth. <laughs> And it was just like, he knew exactly what he was doing. And like, he added that entertainment factor and we're all sitting on the edge of our seats. Like, he's going to fall. There was no chance this guy was going to fall. It That's was, what he wanted. Yeah. It was amazing. It was so cool. Highly recommend. Anyway, when you said tightrope, I just knew I had to go there. But we're just I'm going to circle confirming it confirming that it is Pat. I have well, looked it up and I just want everyone to know. Many years. Lots of no, I love when I love when I find something like that in my vocabulary that I've been like completely. Do you messing. love that, or do you love that you were able to correct me? I love both. Ooh. I, I, <laughs> you think fire? So? I mean, I do enjoy correcting you always. Yeah. No. Yes, I know. <laughs> no, Listen, I just I think it's so funny finding like things that we've thought were one way all our life, and then suddenly at like thirties, we're like, oh, that wasn't that at all. Yeah. Do you and Taya have a working relationship like this where you're just like riffing off each other all the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you like a I yin think, and yang? I think that's one of the reasons we kind of like drift in a way like she's trying to explore other creative outlets. I feel like sometimes, <laughs> especially when you're in a relationship with someone, sometimes yeah. there is this, it's a bit too much sometimes. So I feel like we really have to like be, you're going to do that. I'm going to do that. Ciao. And then, Ciao. and then we yeah. see each other and we're like, okay, did you do it? Yeah, I did it too. Boom, done. Yeah. Because like when we're working together, I remember. I mean, it's been super lovely sometimes when we were doing murals, for example, a few years ago, mm. and we would do the sketch together. So we would get a piece of paper and we would both draw the same paper. Wow. And that for Tricky. me was like, yeah, yeah, we did this nine meter tall mural uh, wow. a few years ago. I don't know how you calculate that in That's the US, fine. but nine meters but makes sense to me. It's a meter sixty, so you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And we actually spent three hours in the coffee place drawing it together and we didn't get mad at each other, which was like, wow. That, if we don't get mad here, I mean, come on. Wait, so know? are you each on one side of the page or like how? It, it was kind of like we were having coffee and we were just talking and just like, you know, hey, maybe here we could do this and then maybe here we could do that. Like, so it, do it was just you like, like so... draw one thing and then she draws one thing and. Yeah. 
And then I'm like, that's, no. And then she's like, oh, but maybe I don't think I could do this anymore. But right, and uh, I, I met my husband. That's we played that as a game. Like we, there were like a couple of us after I, that I too, met yeah, him yeah. at the bar. We all went to my apartment and we played like a you make one line or like thing, and then somebody oh, else cool. adds onto it. And he kept putting these like these eyebrows, like the raised eyebrows on every character because i would like start i would want to make weird little monster things and he would always just give it eyebrows and i was like oh, this is the one <laughs> this is the true my true life. Uh, it's funny because katie and i could probably never work that way i feel oh like we God, tried that would be awful. <laughs> <laughs> i so, would be so bad at that if i were like genuinely trying to make something good yeah i was yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah. like yeah. we've tried once to like kind of We've worked on projects together many times, but we don't live near each other. We live in different states. I know, so yeah. we like send files back and forth. But there was one time we were in a hotel room together trying to crank out a project. And she basically looked at me in the nicest way. It was like, I need to like, I need to do this. And then I'll talk to you in 20 minutes. And it was like, oh. but we well, worked that, differently. That had nothing to do with you. It's just like, yeah. yeah. I have, oh, I know. I have weird like collaborative things where sometimes my, I just need to process on my own time for a second. It's yeah, it's weird. But we do we have like shared screens and like design yeah. like InDesign stuff together. <laughs> yeah, where I'm like, move it two pixels to the left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like a backseat driver. Well. Yeah, no, we've found oh, what works no. for us. No, it's good. We've found I mean, what works I mean, for us. We don't do it anymore because yeah. yeah, it's been 10 years together. And at some point, it's enough. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but I have a fond memory of it and I can talk about it. But right now I feel like I need to be alone like for most of the day. Um, you know, and, <laughs> and then I can deal from me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then in the night we can deal with each other, but yeah, we need yeah. Yeah. time, yeah. For sure. Well, so what are you is important for yeah, every it relationship is. Yeah, for of sure. every sort. It for is. Sure. So what do you what kind of projects are you working on at Shout Bam? Okay. So things have changed a lot because I feel that we started doing the Procreate products and now we moved into mm -hmm. Photoshop as well and stuff. And we have a little online academy and we do, we just open a Patreon right now and we have all these courses. And I feel like we kind of like went on another, like we took another path. So right now when it comes to client work, we get to choose a little bit more than before. So like a few years ago, we would just get pretty much anything that would come our way. Then we started like kind of separating things that, that would go budget wise that we were comfortable with, obviously. And then style wise, right? So like after the budgets, it was the style. So like, if you want something black and white, I'm not going to work with you because I'm not a sad person. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. You need to talk to James no. from Ono. <laughs> yeah. Or Ali K. Oh, exactly. Ali K. Uh, they all I'm sorry. This was a joke. This was no, a bad joke. Yeah, I didn't, I'm, I'm so sorry. I love it. I love I'm it so, so much. For anybody doing black and white, it was a joke. Uh, no, it's good. You're good. Don't You're good. write in. Okay. <laughs> we get a lot of people writing in, so I have okay. To... No, 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 no. You're all, okay. You're don't, don't do get, or write to me personally. Anyone write yeah. in? Nobody. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and I feel like at some point now we, I mean, obviously we get less requests than before because we are really focusing on teaching creative promoting yeah, yeah yeah but like we get since we did a lot of contacts all these years we get clients here and there so like i think every year the right amount of projects that i like working on is like three maybe and those for have to a be whole like a year yeah for a whole year like three or four that's mm -hmm. i'm comfortable with that i feel like i don't want to I'm about to get a couple logo types and stuff just because I didn't do it for a long time. But I, mm. I feel like I need projects that last longer, the budgets are a bit bigger and that I just don't have to make just time for them because I feel like I really want to continue like going after my passion, which is teaching people now and making all these products and all that, which I feel like very fulfilled with that. And the projects kind of like give me that edge sometimes, you know, that I have to be like on trend or I have to deliver and I have meetings and sometimes it's important, right? Yeah, it's but like I feel a like challenge. It is a challenge because otherwise you don't know what's going on in the market. And I don't think it's healthy just for me, at least in my business, just to do products and teaching because I feel like I have to make sure that what I teach is usable in the real world. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah exactly. so, so I, that, yeah. yeah. I Go ahead, noticed yeah. something that I think has been a really important factor to your success. And I'm curious if you agree, but you've always had this shout bam account, but then you've created this personal account where you're showing your face. Like you said, at the beginning, people know you for your beautiful hair. People know you for your wonderful accent and just like your lively energy. And I'm curious, do you feel like that was a huge asset and being able to shift 
from doing mostly client work to then being an yeah. educator and like creating digital product. Like I feel like people know Jimbo before they know Shoutbam. Yeah, definitely. I think it totally helped me in a way. Like I remember when we started this whole making products thing, I think it was like five years ago or like maybe six, we started six. And I started doing mockups and fonts and we started doing a lot of things just because we wanted to sell stuff. Also like selling prints and we saw that nothing was working. Also like we recently started Xiao Bam and we had nobody knew us at that point. And I feel like through my Instagram, I already had like people there for a long time. And I was like, what do you want from me? You know, like, <laughs> and I started talking to them and I feel like people started saying like, we want to do these textures that you do and all that. So yeah. I feel like, I feel like, so you listen. To, yeah, I listen to them, which is super important. I feel like after like all these years, kind of like putting artworks there and kind of like maybe like having this style that we we're talking about before, kind of like people wanted to learn how to do that. So I feel like for sure, Xiao Bam kind of moved in that direction. Be yeah, probably because I had this like, let's, as you said, like personal brand or uh, mm -hmm. whatever. And now I'm really trying to develop this personal brand. And I started doing videos where I show my face because before I was just when English is not your main language, it's a bit daunting, you know, it's a bit complicated in the beginning because I learned English like 10 years ago. So it was definitely hard for me wow. to be like, okay, I'm going to go there. I'm going to start speaking yeah, this thing that I don't scary. even, you know? Yeah, so I now like, imagine. it was, I mean, I could have done it in Spanish. Sure. There is a big market, but I don't know why, because I guess Tea and I, our relationship is in English because she's Croatian. I feel like I started speaking English every day for mm. the last 10 years. And then I got so used to it that it just made sense that my business, also most of my friends speak English and that mm. most of my friends are from outside. So it made sense that I started doing this in English. And then like, I think like a couple, three years ago, I started showing my face and now I want to do it more. And mm. right now, like I'm in Instagram. Well, I didn't do it for two months, so I'm so sorry for that. But I did like these five videos just to see what happens. And it's like this 40 second videos where I show my face and I teach something about Procreate. And they went pretty well and I'm really excited. And I feel like the more I show who I am, the more, I don't know, like the more people talk to me and I love that conversation because I love people and I love talking to everybody. So you yeah, have, I'm so I'm reading this book and they talk about mental triggers that like set people up to value your brand. And you have this really big one called likability. Mm -hmm. And how do you become more likable? It's like by doing likable things. And I see you like showing up and giving away free content. I see you commenting on other people's things saying like, great job. You're just like a hat. You're like a golden retriever. <laughs> right? like, you seem like you're always beautiful, happy. Dark hair. Yes, with luscious lack, with luscious locks. So I think you've got that going for you. But also like we did a workshop with you and you were so keen to teach these people something that you stayed an hour later than yeah. the three hour workshop because you were like, I need to tell you all more. I think that's like one of your values is to like give away as much as you can, which also shows people that if they're going to pay for something, you're going to pack it pretty jam full of everything that they need. Have, is that like a conscious decision or you're just very, you just love sharing? I love sharing it in a way that even when I'm in the, an example, when I'm in the co-working and I see someone that is using Procreate, I'm always going and I'm like, I have a lot of products I can send you right now, you know, and I, can air, <laughs> and I airdrop stuff to them. And like some of my That's friends, so some of my friends I have Procreate, they're like, no, I want to support you and I'm going to buy the products. And I'm like, none of my friends will ever buy my products, you know? <laughs> I love no, that. but uh, I feel like everything works better when you share everything you have and when you give freebies to people, because I feel like not everybody can afford stuff all the time. So I feel obviously like I have to make a living, right? But here and there, I'm just going to try to give stuff for free or like, yeah, as I did uh, in the workshop with you guys. That, that was amazing. Because that I feel like I have time. Like, what am I going to do? I'm going to drink a coffee or I can <laughs> give a little bit. I still had energy. I remember like I was like very tired, but I still had a yeah. little bit of energy. And I was like, maybe this hour will actually mean a lot for them. Maybe they're going to learn more. And for me, this hour, I would just be somewhere else. I, I would probably mm -hmm. enjoy myself with my friends, whatever. Yeah. But I felt like one extra hour was nothing for me. And I feel like, That's you so know, sweet. giving free stuff is the best. I remember I had this designer friend once and he was like, but your products, why do you spend so much time? And the prices are so little and aren't you afraid? Like, and I don't know, or like, aren't you afraid of giving the secrets of your lettering? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no I was just going to ask that. There is no secrets to my lettering. <laughs> Like, what are you talking yeah. about? I don't think there are secrets because for sure I learned those little things from someone else, Other people. maybe consciously or unconsciously. I don't know. But if I know it, I'm not going to be the gatekeeper. I'm just going to say it because I feel yeah. like 
it's yes. better for everybody. We all win and the whole industry gets better. So that's such yeah. a good point because so many people say like, I get so many questions saying, I don't want to share my work online because I'm so worried someone's going to steal it. And it's like, not to be a Debbie Downer, but like we, everything we make is a collection of things we've learned or seen or been influenced by. And so we're just sure. sharing our interpretation and also the nature of the internet. Downer. I think that's well, really yeah. cool. Like that. Oh, it's like so cool. The human experience is just a is. collection of things. It's so cool. But I think people get worried that yeah. they're, they're just going to like, yeah. yeah, they're afraid that someone's just going to steal it. And it's like, sure, that is possible. But I would say more people are going to look at your work and say, that's cool. I wonder how they did that. Or, oh, I really like how they did this. How can I incorporate it into my work? And in order to like exactly. feel that confidence, you have to make a lot of work to feel like you understand what you're inspired by. Yeah. So I love what you said. Like, where are some of the places you like to go for inspiration or to learn something new? I want to point out something though before yes. moving on. Now I'm trying to imagine, trying to teach something. And then that secret that people think there's a secret somewhere. Imagine that there is like this couple things that you're like, oh, this is so unique because I just, I do it myself. Imagine how stressful would it be to save it because you're talking to people you're like there's feedback going on everything is great and then you're like wait i cannot tell them this like let's say for me that is just so stressful mm -hmm. that even if i had a secret i think i would just say it just because yeah. just because i would be so stressed about it anyway yeah uh, i'm not keeping, a great i'm not a great secret keeper a, it's not a healthy feeling it's like if you come from this place of like a scarcity mindset and you're like this is mine nobody can have it yes can touch it yeah then that just brings a lot of negativity into your mindset and your life and it's just going to sure. breed and fester and if you're looking at the giving the sharing the everybody can be involved and they're going to sure. take it and spin it their own way like you're going to be a much much happier human being mm -hmm. there you go yeah, yeah. okay yeah. let's do some rapid fire but just like silly, just some silly questions. Okay, so the first one, what are some places that you go to like find inspiration or to learn new things? Mostly offline, I would say. I love, for example, like, I mean, Europe, everything is so close. Yeah. And like, I feel like all the, in two hours, you can go to an old town in some city and you can see all these like great Art Nouveau shops and like these Gothic buildings and like this. So for me, like the, I think the best is just to get a plane or just, I live in Barcelona, so Barcelona is very jam-packed with all these things. So mm -hmm. I feel like the number one, for sure, offline. Nature as well helps me a lot. And then books. I love books. I feel like I use more books than Pinterest. And, because Pinterest is just, or Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Because I feel like there's so much info there that I get lost. So I'd rather have a book and be like, okay, I can learn from this, but I cannot mm -hmm. learn from everything out there. And then, you know, yeah. maybe sometimes if I really need to learn something, I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a course in design cuts or Domestica or something like that. But mm -hmm. off offline, I would say mostly. Yeah. I love it. Domestica and what was the other one you said? Design cuts. Design cuts. Obviously, we love What's it. What's your favorite Shout out to European Ross. city? For inspo? My favorite European just city. just visit. I can have a list. My top three. <laughs> Yes. But my, yeah, my top three is, the first one is Amsterdam. I really love mm. Amsterdam. If it wasn't for the weather, I probably would move there. But it's very windy and it gets cold. And I live in Barcelona. I'm Spanish. Come on. Then the second one would be Edinburgh in Scotland. Mm. Like mm. I went this summer for the Fringe Festival and I just fell in love. But with this whole Brexit thing, I wouldn't move there because it's complicated. And then mm -hmm. I think the third one would be Ljubljana. And that's in Slovenia. So next Ooh, to Croatia, amazing. I used to go there a lot. I've heard it's beautiful. Amazing. I'm okay, a take gal. It is Ooh. okay. I didn't know that about you. <laughs> it's all how do you like? Go. It's all it's like muka. No wonder everywhere. you like it. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, next question. How do you like your yeah. pizza? <laughs> With bunch of cheese and tomato, without yeah. pineapple. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. With a bunch of ingredients and thin, thin. Okay, that's important. That's important. Yes, yeah. New York that style, not Chicago. Yes. Okay, have you seen Harry Potter? <laughs> yes okay yes but <laughs> would but okay well let's try this one you're not oh, a fan? Would, i am a fan but i don't remember nothing about it okay oh. do you remember when he like has the special ink where his lettering he's like drawing and it cuts into his hand yeah 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 i think so. okay yeah. okay it's so like would you rather the teachers torturing him yes it's the torture yeah. device would you rather have your drawing etched onto the back of your hand like harry potter 
anytime you illustrate. So just like every time you're drawing, it's going to show up and bleed through your hand or sleep in a tiny closet under the stairs for the rest of your life. <laughs> <You're a thing. laughs> I have tattoos, so I'll go for the first one. Yeah. Mm. Great. Love Bring that. it in. Thank Bring it in. I can handle yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then what are two non-design related things that you're obsessed with? It could be a podcast. It could be a book. It could be music. What anything? It could be like your new water bottle. I don't know why I always use yeah, that example. Yeah, you love water bottles. I do. Water bottle. They I are don't know. very popular right now, like the Stanley cups. Or mm. do people put water in there or other stuff? But uh, I mean, I um, think it's for water. I guess so. Who knows? Yeah. But if a water bottle is your priority, <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> We're very uh, people. <laughs> yeah. So. Now there's someone who's going to be like, well, it's mine. So yeah. Um, I mean, I do love a good, I love an ice cold drinky. I love it. No, drink. me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah okay. So, drink. so you said two. two. Um, I mean, you could do more. Okay. I love ginger beer. Mm. It's mm -hmm. my new addiction. Same. That's mm. for sure. Okay. I love singing in open mics. If that would be mm. something that oh, it really sure. helps me. Love it. Yeah. And then. Do you sing Incubus? You're like, love hurts. But sometimes yes. It's a good yes. Hurt. I know you're a singer, Katie, so I know yes, that. Yes, she is. I heard your song in the car. Well, in the car. Yes! In, in his, yeah, that thing. Oh. <laughs> Not in my car. I mean, in Ilana's car, I guess. Or in your car. I don't know. Yes, in yes, someone's yes. Car. Yeah. Yes, on, yeah, we did a video. I did a video where you, like, demoed it for me, remember? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's good. And then people, I guess. Uh, oh, you're so cute. And I, I, and I can stop there. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Okay, so now just do a quick, where can people find you? People can find me at shoutbam.com. Then they can find me in Instagram at Jimbo Bernau's all together. And they can also find my new Patreon, which is growing. Yes. And now we are almost to 80 patrons. And I, yeah, I share two video tutorials a month. And I'm telling you that there's a lot of value there. So yeah. Oh, that's, I'm that's sure. That's... I bet you just keep adding to it and stay way longer than you tell people you're going to be there. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. The last tutorials were like three hours and it's a bit scary, you know, because you put a lot of effort in it, but I, yeah. but I'm confident we'll grow the community there. And Amazing. Yeah, well, it sounds like you got Amazing. a good one already. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's there. We started three months ago and yeah, fingers crossed, but yeah, I'm Amazing. super excited about it. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. It is always a pleasure to talk to you and we'll have to have you on in a couple months to check back in on how your Patreon's doing. Let's do this. Of okay. course. Thank you so All much. All right. Guys. Yeah, of course. All good things.